Hello and welcome to the second part of the video series in my channel on how to develop an expert advisor using MQL4 programming language. So in this video, I'm going to cover the different type of variables and different type of operators and a few commands that we use a lot like if statements, for loops and stuff like that. So to start, I'm just going to create a new expert advisor. So we have a few different types of variables. What is variables? Variables are basically holding data and value for you. The first one I'm going to talk about is integers. So you can always define your variables in this area. Let me actually clean up these comments. They are really unnecessary. So here I'm just going to define an integer value. We're going to define them by using int then we choose a name for our variable i'm just going to name it a and we can also assign a value to it let's say our a variable has a value of three and then we're going to end our code by adding this sign to it we also have boolean variables which can either be true or false so let's actually define a bool variable i'm just going to name it is something and we can also assign a value to it. Let's say it's true. You can also add strings. Strings are going to hold text and characters. And note that we need to put out string values in our double quotations. So one of the most important variables is double variable. We use this a lot because the price is not usually integer. I'm just going to name it PR and give it a value of let's say 8.65 whatever we also have other types of variables like color so i'm just gonna assign a default value let's say this is the list we have a long list let's say green we also have another important variable type called date time we are storing a specific time and date in this variable and whenever you want to assign a value to this it is highly unlikely though because usually we assign this value in our methods but let's say we want to give it a default value we use capital d and single quotation then we write the date and time like this We do it something like this of course there's other types of variables but we might cover them later they're not very important let me clear a few of these comments There is also different operations you can do on these variables. You can add them together, you can divide them, multiply them, and stuff like that. That is just easy stuff. We're gonna learn them as we progress through these tutorials. When you define a variable up here, it's gonna be a public variable which can be accessed within any method you define here. It can be accessed on in it it can be accessed on thick or it also can be accessed in any other methods that you're gonna create but if you create a variable inside a method it's going to be only accessed on that method for example if i create a double here and let's name it current price and i'm gonna put the bid value in it as you know, bid is the current price of this currency pair. Let's also change this double here we have. I'm going to just name it price. Okay, this is price. And the default value, I'm going to set zero for it. And now on init, whenever we attach our expert advisor to the chart, I'm going to change the value for this price. I'm going to change it to... And notice that I'm not going to add double here because it's already been defined as a double here. If you add double here, let's see, actually bring it here. It's going to define a new variable which is only accessed on init. It's going to mess everything up. So make sure you do not define a new variable as price because it's already been defined here. So I'm going to set the price value to bid and whenever a price changes... I'm going to get 
the price and let's use an if statement to determine if the price has been increased or decreased we can just simply say if current price greater than price let me actually shift this forward I'm gonna print a comment I'm gonna say price went up because the price that we just got is greater than the price we got before in the if statements we also can use an else if which means if this was false then our else if is going to be checked next i'm gonna just simply say else if so else if our current price is less than the price we're gonna use another comment then whenever price goes down we're gonna say it's going down also we can just use else in our if statements so whenever all the conditions above are just false the code inside else is going to be run and here at the end of our tick we're just going to say price equals to current price this way next time the price changes we have the previous price stored here i'm gonna save this and let's go and check this out i'm just gonna refresh this let's double click on our expert advisor and attach it to the chart it's going down as you can see nothing happened the price haven't changed yet it's going down again it's going up and it's like that it will comment every time a price changes so sometimes we want to do a certain task multiple times and we want our code to be organized for that purpose it's better to always use a method for example here we always call this code in on tick method we can just simply move all of this to another method and just call that method every time on tick event happens and we keep our on tick method clean so we might be able to add other stuff in it as well so to create another method we just simply say void and we choose a name for our method for example i'm gonna just name this check price status then i'm gonna open and close parentheses and simply like that we have a method and we can just go ahead and cut all of these paste it here and simply every time the tick event is going to be called we're just going to call our method here if your method doesn't return anything you can set the type of that method as void otherwise sometimes you want your method to return something for you in that case instead of void you use the type of the value you want to get let's say anytime you want the price changes which is the on take method you want to get the spread of your broker as you know spread is the difference between ask and bid so let's just create a method for it i'm just gonna get down here and say double get spread so we simply create a double name it d or whatever and it's going to be ask minus bid this is going to be our spread and we can just simply return d let's actually print this so whenever on tick happens first of all we're gonna comment the price status after that we just print spread is when we separate it because we want to add another value to it this is get spread method which we just defined here so whenever this is getting called a double is going to be returned actually let's clean that a double is going to be returned and this double is going to be difference between ask and bid 
it's gonna be printed here let's go and check it out just gonna refresh this as you can see the price comment is changing let's go to the experts and as you can see spread is is also being printed in the log so two things happening at the same time because we put them in different methods and our on tick method is clean it's just two lines of code everything else happening on those methods that we separated it to keep our code clean sometimes you want to choose a value for a variable on the start of your expert advisor you want to give your expert advisor an input so as you can see here let me actually remove our expert advisor whenever we try to add an expert advisor to the chart this window pops up there's a little there is a bunch of settings and stuff we're going to cover that later but for now there is no input here because we haven't defined any input for our expert advisor let me cancel this go back here whenever you want to give your expert advisor an input here where you define your variables you simply add an input to your variable it's now input and a with the default value of three and let me save this let's actually go and refresh here and now whenever i drag test two you notice that another tab has been added input and it's a variable and value of three which you can change to whatever number you want and whenever you click ok when the expert advisor gets attached to the chart the initial value of that variable is not going to be three anymore it's to be it's going to be the number you defined for it let's actually make all these values an input to see how they look like in our expert advisor window You might notice that their color also changed to a brownish kind of color anyway let's go and refresh this first let me remove the expert advisor and refresh this now when i attach this as you can see here we're getting an error when we try to attach the expert advisor to the chart the reason is we are changing the value for the price because price is now is an input inputs we cannot modify in our code also one more interesting thing that i want to show you is this button here called compile whenever you want to test your code to see if there is an error in it you just simply click on this compile it is going to list any possible errors here and you can just simply fix them otherwise if you don't fix these errors your expert advisor is not going to be attached to the chart every time you're trying to attach it it's just going to be rejected so let's just remove the input here for the price variable we don't want it to be of a type of input let's compile one more time as you can see no error so let's go back to the chart refresh and attach test 2 as you can see here we have different types of values we can determine we can also change the text here change the color there's a bunch of colors we can select and also a date which we can change now let's actually take a look at the chart in the mql4 programming language this bar which is changing the price right now is representing by the number zero this is the bar number zero the other bar is number one this is number two three four five and goes on like this to whatever many bars that are currently available on this chart it could be thousands of bars it doesn't matter as long as these bars goes they have been indexed which is the index starts from here which is number zero and goes back so this bar that is currently changing 
is bar number zero so whenever you want to get the price of any bar here you just use the bars indexed for example if you say the price the closing price for example or opening price of the bar number let's say this is zero this is one this is two it's just going to give you the number for this bar the opening the closing the high and the low are the prices we can get of any bar we want simply by just calling one simple method and give it an index of that bar it's just gonna return the value for us so let's go to our code here I'm just gonna remove all our previous codes so let's actually use this method just gonna rename it check bar status also let's rename this to check bar status and instead of calling it on thick I'm just gonna call it once because I don't want it to run every time the price changes I'm just gonna call it on init so whenever we attach the expert advisor to the chart it's just gonna call this method once so this is also a good opportunity to tell you about for loops so as i told you before mql4 program is a lot like c sharp or some other programming languages so if you're familiar with those languages probably this is going to be a piece of cake for you so whenever we want to use a for loop we're just going to say for we open parentheses let me actually do it like this for example we're gonna say for i equals to zero which is the bar number zero now we're gonna separate this and add a condition for it for how long we want this loop to keep happening we're gonna add the condition we're saying as long as i is less than or equals let's say 10 and we also determine that i is going to be increased every single loop so what this does is going to create a variable named i assign the value zero for it then every time that the code here has been executed it's just gonna it's just gonna add one to our i for example if i is zero it's gonna make it zero plus one equals to one and then run the code one more time and it's gonna keep doing that until i gets bigger than 10 which means gets to 11 whenever the i becomes 11 it's no longer less or equals than 10 then this for loop ends so we just print the high low closing and opening price of that bar we need to convert i which is an integer into string so to do that we're just gonna say integer this is, there is a method for it integer to string as you can see and we open and close the parentheses around i so this is just going to convert that to a string for us here we also need to define and type for it it's an integer let's compile now after we printed the bar we're just going to give it in a space and we print the open price it's going to be open i same thing here whenever we want to convert a price which is in double here we're just saying double to a string I'm just going to open parentheses around this of course this is uh, not necessary I don't think you're gonna get an error for this but I'm just saying it so you would know how to convert doubles and integers to a string there's also dates time and other kind of variables you can convert to a string whenever you need to and this is just an example so whenever you want to get the price the open price of a bar you're gonna say open and you just simply give the index of that bar for example if it's bar number zero you give it zero if it's bar number thousand you give it a number thousand but for now it's bar number i it's in this for loop and we interested in bar number i which is a number between zero and ten we're gonna separate this 
we're gonna add another print we say now give us the close value I'm just gonna print close and exactly the same as we got the open I'm just gonna copy this And instead of open, we can simply say close. This is going to give us the close value of that bar. We can also do the high and low. It's exactly the same way. Instead of open, I'm just going to say high. And let's separate this. I'm gonna give it in a space so they don't get attached to each other low and another space now I'm gonna separate the print parameter give it another parameter to add to the line and this one is going to be low let me compile this no errors great Note that whenever you click compile, it automatically saves the code for you. Let's go to our chart. I'm going to make a refresh here. I'm going to go to our experts tab. Let's clear this data. Now I'm going to attach test 2 and click OK. As you can see, it's been printed 10 bars, actually 11 bars. They're open price, close price, high price and low price let me go down here it's starting from bar zero bar one bar two it's going up bar 10. as you can see you can simply access any bars price just by a simple open close high or low and giving the index of that bar so i think this is it for this video in the next videos i'm going to cover more mql4 programming language so please don't forget to like and subscribe and ask me any questions in the comments. Thank you for watching.